Hi there everyone, and welcome back to Chemistry 3.6. Today we're going to be looking at acid-base equations, and how they relate to the solubility principles we covered in the first and second PowerPoint. However, before we begin, I'm just going to go over a couple of key concepts from Level 2 Chemistry. You need to know that acids are any substance that donates a proton, and bases are any substance that accepts a proton. Acid-base equations are equations where one compound donates a proton to another compound. Great, so moving forward to the level 3, acid-base equilibria. Again, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Some new terms for level 3 are conjugate acid and conjugate base. A conjugate acid is a substance formed by the donation of a proton, and a conjugate base is a substance formed by the acceptance of a proton. So this might seem a wee bit confusing, but we'll go on to a few examples. Later they'll explain it better. Another key term for level 3 chemistry is amphiprotic substances. Amphiprotic substances can donate or accept protons. Your classic amphiprotic substance is water, because water can donate a proton and become OH-, or it can accept a proton and become H3O+. If we look down at this diagram, it's the best way to understand acids, bases, conjugate acids, and conjugate bases. So you have the acid here, HNO2. You can tell it's the acid because it has the hydrogen that it can donate. You also have the base. And in every acid-base equation, there has to be an acid and a base present. So by default, water is the base in this situation. Other times, water can be the acid because it is an amphiprotic substance. However, because we already have an acid, this means water is a base in this situation. So when an acid donates its H plus to water, it loses the H plus that it previously had, and it forms something called the conjugate base. So every acid has a conjugate base, and the way to find any conjugate base is to get your acid and remove one H plus from it. So we have HNO2 with no charge, it loses an H plus, it becomes NO2 minus, and that's the conjugate base. Equally, every base must have a conjugate acid. All you do is add the H+, and you have the conjugate acid. So we have water here as a base. It accepts a proton, forming a conjugate acid, H3O+. These four terms are found everywhere in acid-base chemistry. Two other definitions we need to learn are strong acids versus weak acids. Strong acids are any acid that fully dissociates when in an aqueous solution. What this means is if I put an acid in water, it will fully turn into H3O plus and its negative anion. In this case, HCl goes into H3O plus and Cl minus. We call it a strong acid because it is a one-way reaction, so there's no reactant left when you react HCl with water. Weak acids, on the other hand, only partially dissociate in aqueous solutions. So this ties in with the previous two power points where we've had equilibrium equations. For example, ethanoic acid in water turns into CH3COO minus, and H3O+. However, this reaction is two-way, and when the reaction is completed, there will still be some of each reactant present, as well as some product. A common mistake people make is they think a strong acid means a concentrated acid, and that's not true. In chemistry, a strong acid just means that the acid fully dissociates. A weak acid just means the acid only partially dissociates. It has nothing to do with concentration at all. You can have a strong but dilute acid, and you can have a very concentrated weak acid. That's one of the most commonly made mistakes in acid-based chemistry, so try to make sure that you don't do it. So down here I have pictures of strong and weak acids. On the left hand side we have a strong acid. Notice how they're all separated from one another because it has fully dissociated in water. If we look on the right hand side we see weak acids. And what you'll notice here is that it is only partially dissociated. In many cases you'll see that there is no dissociation and so a lot of this acid has stayed as reactant. Now moving on to how we use this concept to answer questions. And most acid based questions are all about calculating pH. And the acidity of any solution is related to the hydrogen ion concentration. So the concentration of H3O+. H3O plus is linked to pH in a log equation. So pH is equal to negative log of H3O plus. A commonly made mistake when working out pH is people forget to put the negative sign in. Equally, by rearranging this equation, you can work out the concentration of H3O plus if you have the pH. To do this, H3O plus concentration equals the inverse log of the negative pH. 
So let's use that to work out the pH of water. The hydrogen ion concentration of water is 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre, which corresponds to a pH of 7. So let's work this out. So we know water turns into H3O plus and OH minus in this equation. 2 H2O to OH minus and H3O plus. The equilibrium constant for this equation is called the ionic product for water. It's just the same as any KS equation and we call it KW. So KW equals products over reactants remembering to remove any solids or liquids and this leaves you with OH minus times H3O plus. You know the concentration of OH- is 10 to the negative 7, and the concentration of H3O plus is 10 to the negative 7, giving you a KW of 10 to the negative 14. Now this is a number that is worth remembering because it's very helpful in working out pH related questions. So KW equals the concentration of OH- times the concentration of H3O plus, and KW is always 10 to the negative 14. So let's use the concepts we've learned so far to try and work out the pH of strong and weak acids. So for a strong acid, the hydrogen ion concentration is the same as the concentration of the acid because of the fact it fully dissociates. And that makes sense if you look at the equation. All of the HCl is reacting to form H3O plus and Cl minus. And because the pH depends on the concentration of H3O plus, and there's a 1 to 1 ratio of HCl to H3O plus, this means the concentration of HCl will equal the concentration of H3O plus. For a weak acid, it's a bit more complicated, because you can't just take the concentration of CH3COH and say that it has all turned into H3O plus, because it hasn't. As a result, we need to look at the equilibrium constant and the acid concentration to work out pH of a weak acid solution. And the same situation applies for a strong base versus a weak base. The only difference is the H2O turns into an OH- rather than an H3O+. So let's do an example. The first example is a nice easy one. Calculate the pH of a 0.28 mole per litre solution of HCl. So we know HCl equals 0.28 moles per litre. And we know HCl is a strong acid. And strong acids fully dissociate, so the hydrogen ion concentration is the same as the concentration of the strong acid. So if the concentration of the strong acid is 0.28 moles per litre, the concentration of H3O plus is 0.28 moles per litre. Now that we know the hydrogen ion concentration, we can put this into the pH equation and go pH equals the negative log of H3O plus, pH equals negative log 0.28, and that gives us an answer that the pH is 0.55. So that was a nice easy one. You can equally do the same thing with a base. So I'm going to let you have a go at this one. And so I'll give you a minute to go through the example, and then after that I'll go through how I would do it. So the difference between this and the previous situation isn't huge, except we've got a base rather than an acid. So again, I suggest write out the expression identify whether the base is a strong or a weak base and go from there. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base and just like a strong acid it will fully dissociate in water and we've shown that here in the equation. NaOH going to Na plus and OH minus. We also have been told the concentration of NaOH is 1.0 moles per litre. NaOH is a strong base and consequently OH minus equals 1.0 moles per litre. That's the only difference between a strong acid and a strong base. A strong acid, so what we've worked out now is the OH minus concentration is 1.0 moles per litre. A piece of information about the constant of water is really helpful here because we know that Kw equals 10 to the negative 14. And if we know Kw and we know one of the two species, OH minus or H3O plus, we can work out the other one. So now we go 10 to the negative 14 equals 1 times the concentration of H3O plus. H3O plus equals 10 to the negative 14 on 1. And now we've worked out that H3O plus has a concentration of 10 to the negative 14. From there, it's nice and easy just to put the numbers in the pH equation and work out that the pH of this solution is 14, which means it's very basic. Example 3 asks us to calculate the concentration of OH- and the concentration of H3O plus for a solution of pH 2.88. So they're asking us to do things in reverse. So we know that if we rearrange this equation, we can work out the concentration of H3O plus 
is equal to the inverse log of negative pH. So using our calculator, we can work out that the inverse log of negative 2.88 is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3. So now we've worked out how much H3O plus ions are in the solution. Because we know H3O plus, and because the constant of water never changes from 10 to the negative 14, we can work out the concentration of OH minus. So we substitute into this equation, 10 to the negative 14 equals OH minus times H3O plus. We put in the two things we know, 10 to the negative 14 divided by the concentration of H3O plus, which is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3, tells you that the concentration of OH minus is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 12. So just by using the KW equation and the pH equals negative log concentration of H3O+, we can work out the concentration of acids and bases quite easily. So just to go over a quick summary of the things you need to know. You need to know these four basic definitions. An acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. You need to know that every base has a conjugate acid and it turns into its conjugate acid after it has accepted the H+. You need to know that every acid turns into its conjugate base after it has donated its proton. You need to know these three equations that we've learned. pH equals the negative log of H3O+. The concentration of H3O+, equals inverse log of negative pH. Inverse log button is found by pressing shift log on your calculator. And finally, you need to have an understanding that Kw is the equilibrium constant for water, and it always has a constant value of 10 to the negative 14. You need to know that amphiprotic substances are substances that can donate or accept protons. We really don't deal with many in Chemistry 3.6, but the key one that you need to know about is that water can go to H3O+, or become OH-. You need to understand the concept that strong acids does not mean concentrated acids. Strong acids are acids that fully dissociate when in an aqueous solution. HCl is an example of a strong acid, and the equation is shown here. Notice that it is not reversible. Equally, you need to know that weak acids partially dissociate in aqueous solution. So you need to understand that acids like ethanoic acid partially react and partially form products, but there will still be unreacted reactant once the equilibrium reaction has completed. Finally, you need to understand that bases obey the same rule as acids, except instead of forming H3O+, they form an OH-. Just like there are strong and weak acids, there are strong and weak bases. And that's all for this topic. 